I keep on trying to teach people is that God doesn't speak through circumstances. Okay? I want you to get this. God doesn't speak through circumstances. If God spoke through circumstances and you win the lotto, what is he saying? Oh, I love you so much. I love you, I love you, I love you. Okay, then the tax man takes half. What's God saying now? But only half, eh? Only half. And if I don't win the lotto, then um, God doesn't love me. God doesn't speak through circumstances. He speaks within circumstances through his word. Through his word. If you want to know what God says, you need to read your Bible. Matthew 14, that's where we are today. And most of us know this story, Matthew 14, 22. And we're going to stand still in a couple of scriptures today. I'm going to read it to you and just expand a little bit. I am going to be about 10 minutes late, so we won't be finishing at 9 or 10 on the dot. Let's read this together, 14 verse 22. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray now when evening came, he was alone there. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. That means the wind was blowing hard. Now in the fourth watch of the night, that's about three o'clock in the morning, Jesus went to them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled or scared, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But Jesus immediately spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Do not be afraid. And when Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, Come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, Oh, you little of faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Then those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. You see, we can talk about this morning. There's a lot of, there's a many a message has been preached from this specific text about Peter walking on the water, about getting out the boat, about keeping your eyes on Jesus. There's so many different angles and messages you can get from here. But what I want you to see this morning is that who sent them in the boat? You see, Jesus is omnipotent, omnipresent, and omniscient meaning he's got all the power, okay? He's got all the knowledge, and he's everywhere at all times. So he knows the beginning from the end, the future, everything. He knew that that storm is going to come. Do you follow that? He knew that when they get in the boat, he's going to come and walk into them on the water. He knew that they were going to be afraid. Not just of him walking on the water, but on this mission that he sent them. He knew that they're going to be scared. But he also knew that he's got the power to calm the waves. He also knew that he's going to come walking on the, on the water. And I don't know about you, every time I get in the pool, I, walk on, I try to walk on the water. I promise you, every time, something I do in my private thinking, I'm going to walk on this water. And every time I hit the bottom, um, <laughs> I've been doing it for 45 years. I'll do it till the day I die. I just keep on. It's, it's an act of faith. You know, I'm going to walk on the water. <laughs> you, know? um, you see. Very <laughs> 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 and then I'm going to be afraid. It's like, oh, yes. <laughs> yes, imagine that. <laughs> Look, Mono, hands. Look, Mono, hands. So, this is Jesus sending. This is not popular. This is not popular. 
Because God sends us on missions knowing exactly that storms will come. Storms will come. Your faith will be tested. It will be proved. You see, serving Jesus is for real men and real women. It takes somebody with character and backbone to bow their knee to the king and listen to him and take his command and accept his mission. Some of our missions are much bigger than others. Some are called to raise their children. Moms, I want to speak about this, is that being a house mother, please don't ever say I'm just a house mom. Don't ever say that. And if you find somebody that says that, stop them and say, whoa, you are doing one of the biggest jobs. Have you tried being a house mom, dad? Have you just tried being the house mom for one day? Feeding the kids, cleaning, doing the washing, making sure the house, the dogs, the this, and then go there and do that. And oh, It's hard work. Can't do it. Some people's mission is bigger in the sense of it's out in the world. It's, it's different. It's not different in value. It's just different. Some people are called to be givers. Do you know, how, do you know if you want to know if you're supposed to be a giver? You've got a generous heart. You just want to give. All right? Don't because people have hurt you close your heart. God wants to use you. Some people are, are, are born to be counselors. How do you know if you're born to be a counselor? Since you can remember, people have come to you with their problems. And just tell everything. They just spill the beans. Blah, blah, blah. Man, I remember. No, let me not tell that. It's not appropriate. But I've always had people come and share their problems. When I was in the army, my room was the counseling room. I promise you, my room was the counseling room. I didn't even know Jesus. The people would come in. Can we lock the door? You know? But they would slip in. You, know? so they would, you can see them. They're actually leopard crawling my room. You know? Doing an ops. No one's checking into my room. Lock the door. I need to talk to you. <laughs> and then we'd cry together for two hours. <laughs> And we'd go out like much house, like, hey, high five, like a shop. Eh? You sh Unlock the door. No one's watching. Go, 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 go. Tomorrow night, it's the next guy and the next guy and the next guy. Why? Why is it like that? Because that's your call, your gift. Some people are encouragers. They just naturally encourage. They're as poor as, as church mice. Yet they are so encouraging, and they, they're the sickest people, yet they are so encouraging. Why? Because the God has made them that way. You see, Jesus knows who he sends. The question here is, do you know who sends you? Do you know who the one is that walks on water? Who's the wave walker? You see, who is this Jesus? This is a, we say this and we understand this, but I want to take you to Scripture this morning. Isaiah 9. If you can go to Isaiah 9, verse 6 in your Bible. That's about in the middle of the Bible. I want to show you some things this morning. Listen to what it says. For unto us a child is born. And to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. You see, it's so easy to see Jesus on the cross, blonde hair, blue eyes, the pictures that we have. Okay, no, number one, Jesus wasn't blonde. Okay, he didn't have blue eyes. 
It wasn't something that we would uh, look at and say, oh, look at that attractive person. Let me take you to Isaiah 53. I want you to read this with me this morning. Who has believed our report? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. It's important that you notice that for he is a capital H, shall grow up before him with a capital H. The son will grow up before the father. Okay. And as a root out of dry ground, dry ground, he has no form of comingliness, comingliness. And when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. You see, we have to see Jesus in the following state to understand. He is despised and rejected by men. A man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. And we hid him, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. We didn't think he's something or high. Surely he has borne our griefs. He has carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for your peace, your peace was upon him. And by his stripes you are healed. And we all, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed. He was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter. As a sheep before its shears in silence. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who will declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people, he was stricken. And they made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his death. Because he has done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my servant shall justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. See, Jesus was beaten on a cross. You see, who is Jesus that sends you out? You see, once you start understanding who's speaking to you, then obedience becomes easier. Once you understand who is the one that sends you out, that's given you your commission, your order, your instruction, it becomes easier and you start relying on him because you know who he is. He's not just a man. He's the omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient God. Mark 8. And I want to read these scriptures to you. So I want you to see it from the Bible. Mark 8, verse 27. Now Jesus and his disciples went out to the towns of Caesarea and Philippi, and on the road, he, Jesus, asked his disciples, saying to them, Who do the men say I am? And if you listen to a lot of the debates on Jesus, even from Oprah Winfrey right to the Muslims, 
the woke community, they all ask, who's Jesus? What about him? Because they don't understand. So they answered, John the Baptist, but some say Elijah and others say one of the prophets. And he said to them, but who do you say I am? Peter answered, he said to him, you are the Christ. Another chapter in Matthew says, the son of God. That's who you are. Matthew 27, 54. So when the centurion, this is the guy that was helping kill Jesus, and those with him, who were guarding Jesus, saw the earthquake and the things that had happened. They feared greatly, saying, truly, this was the Son of God. This is not one of his disciples. This is not, this is not a saved person. This is not a person that was on Jesus' side. This is a person that his job was to crucify and kill people, and Jesus was just another number. Your number's up. This is the guy that through or drew lots to see who can get his jacket. Spit and tease at him. And when he saw this, he saw, this is the son of God. It's not just another person. So when the disciples go and they, Jesus sends them out, they're not seeing a mere man saying go. They're seeing God himself saying, I've got a plan for your life. I've got a job for your life. I've created you with purpose. You did not come on my monkey or for some goo to you. You're not product of evolution. You see, because when we believe you're product of evolution, it means there's no real purpose for your life. So you can do whatever you want to. You can just live and you won't be accountable for your life. And, they, and there's just no real value to you. That humans are invaluable. They've got no worth. That's what evolution teaches. That sits behind it. It's the thinking that there's no creator. That all of this just exists because of some spore that came from some alien planet and landed in a soup of stones and water and decided one day I'm going to grow a leg really you see when you understand that the creator the king of kings and the lord of lords spoke you into existence for a time such as this you were born for a time such as this and you might have gone through stuff in your life for a time such as this. You're going to reach a generation that I can't reach. You're going to reach a people that I can't speak to. You're going to reach a community and society, a school, a workplace, a group of friends, a group of fishermen, a pub that I can't reach. But I didn't send you. Jesus did. Who's this Jesus? He is the King of Kings. I want to take you to one more scripture this morning. Revelations 5. This is at the end of time that we can see truly who he is. And this is John. And John, the revelator, not John the Baptist, John the revelator, was marooned. He was an outcast on this island all by himself. And then he wrote the book of Revelation. You see, even in this, he understands that who's sending me to this island? Is it the courts of this world? Is it this worldly system that's putting me on this island? That's sending me into the storm? Or is it Jesus? You see, if you understand that he is in control of your life, 
you see things different. And you might get a revelation. And John, on this island, writes the book of Revelation. Listen to what he says. And I, John, saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. Then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and to lose its seals? And no one in heaven or on the earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look at it. And I see this picture how we grow up with this cartoon. Who's the guy that can pull the sword out? And everybody comes and tries and pull the sword out. But the sword only fits in one. It's only one that can open this scroll. So I wept much because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll or to look at it. No one could even look at it. But one of the elders said to me, do not weep. Behold the lion of the tribe of Judah. The root of David has prevailed to open the scroll and to lose its seven seals. And I look and behold in the midst of the throne of the four living creatures, in the midst of the elders stood a lamb. As though he had been slain. Having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. Then he came and took the scroll out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. Now when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb each having a harp and a golden bowl full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. That's your prayers. And they sang a new song saying, you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood. Out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation, and have made us kings and priests to our God. And we shall reign on the earth. Then I looked and I heard a voice of many angels around the throne. The living creatures and the elders. And the number of them was ten thousand, ten thousand, and thousands of thousands. Saying it with a loud voice. Worthy the Lamb who was slain, to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is under heaven or on the earth or under the earth as such are in the sea and all that are in them heard the saying, blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. You see, he who walks on the waves, that's him. It's him who died. It's him who poured out his blood. It's him that was slain. He is the King of kings. When he sends you, you don't have to fear. You don't have to be scared. You don't have to worry what people say about you. You've got the king of kings behind you. He is for you and not against you. You see, when you come to that place where you understand that you're not saved by a little prayer. You're not saved by being dunked in water. You're not saved by a church. You're not saved by a pastor. You're not saved by tradition. You are not saved by any means of man. 
you are saved by this lamb. And if you understand that the only lifeline you have is Jesus, that's it. It's only him that's worthy of your praise. It's only him that keeps you from falling into abyss. It's him who comes walking on the water when the waves are going. And what does he say to you? Don't be scared. Don't be scared. Don't fear. I don't care what the economy does, my son, my daughter. I don't care if you've got a job or lost your job. I don't care if you've got sickness or not. He walks on the water and he says, don't be scared. It is I. You cast your life upon him. You look upon him. You look at him. When Peter got out the boat, it's when he took his eyes off him. When he started looking at the waves. Look at him. Keep his eyes on him. Don't look at a pastor. Don't look at a church. Don't look at an organization. Don't look at a job. Don't look at a business. Don't look at a doctor for your healing. Don't look at him. He is worthy. He is worthy and Him alone. Glory, glory, glory. There's no one else. There's nothing else. All of this will pass away. It will pass away. But He will remain. Because of, what does Isaiah say? There will be no end to His kingdom. No end. No one else can take that scroll. No one else can read it. No one else can open the seals. No one else is worthy of the praise and the honor and the glory and the blessing. Only Jesus. He has a mission for you. It's not a mere man that sends you out and says, go preach the gospel. Go tell the poor. Go reach a nation, go reach a school, go reach your employees, employers. It's not a mere man. It's not a good guy that sinned. It is the king of kings. And he bought them with his blood. He bought them. This morning I want to encourage you that the God that walks on the wave that gets in your boat is the king of of all kings. He is the Lord of all lords. There is none beside him and no one can power against him. No one can revel. He's got no enemies. No one can match him. And that, and you, and you and I need to change the way we talk because he says the same power that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. It dwells in you. He lives within you. You and in, 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 in everybody, no. And those who cast their life on the cross of Christ, he lives. He says, I will make my abode inside of you. Me and my father, we will come and reside inside of you. And then Acts 1 8, he says, And when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will receive. Power. Power. Power to do what? Number one, to preach the gospel, to tell people about Jesus. Number two, never to feel alone. Never to look back into your life again and say, where did I come from? Am I qualified? Don't look back. Those who look back become salt pillars. Yeah, but you don't know my family. I don't care about your family. It's broken. You don't, you don't know what sins we've done and what I've done. I don't care. It's broken. It's broken. Whether it be masons, whether it be alcoholism, whether it be whatever, it is broken. Because Romans 8 says, 
that we are made free from the law of sin and death. Put your hand to the plow. Don't look back. Go to the other side. Jesus will meet you there. He will meet you in the place where it's the hardest and the toughest. He will meet you. He will not leave you. He will give you power to pray for the sick and they will be healed. Just do it. I don't have the faith for it. If I don't have the faith for it, just do it without faith then. But do it. Just do it. You might just get the faith when you see the first person healed. Let's close our eyes. Father, we thank you for your presence. Holy Spirit, I know you are here this morning. This is far too good just to be me talking. We give you all the honor and all the glory. Lord, this morning we want to come again as a congregation and we want to come and cast our lives on the cross. We want to say again that Jesus, you are our Lord. If you've never prayed this or if you've prayed over a hundred times, somebody asked me in the week, is it right to do it over and over? I said, well, I do it every Sunday. Every Sunday I renew my commitment to the Lord. Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you as a sinner. And I know without you I'm lost. But you have paid the price for me. You died on the cross for my sin. And I'm guilty of that sin, Lord. But you took it. You took the hiding. You took the beating. You poured out your blood for me. And purchased me for God. I accept that. I declare that you are my Savior. That died and rose again. And ascended into heaven. And you are Lord. You are my Lord. Come and live inside me. Make me and mold me the way you want me. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank you for saving me now. Now writing my name in your book of life. And from today on, I am a child of God. In Jesus' name. Keep your eyes closed, your heads bowed. Please, if you've prayed that for the first time today, would you just look at me? I'm not going to make you stand up. I'm not going to make you come forward. Just look at me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Lord, thank you. Thank you for souls, Lord. Thank you that you still save. That you still save us. Come and be glorified. I want us to sing that last song again. Would you stand with me, Skull? Will you put that up, please? Kijk op die TV, jy makkelijker weet. Bietje links. Nog. Bietje nog bietje links. Daar is hy. Het op. Father, we worship you. We crown you as Iliki Sanam.
Ja. En dan gaan we op die klik niet op die volgen. Is nie hy nie? Okay. Ja. Dis Jesus die wat weet. Dis nie hy nie? Klik niet op, op die skerm in die kant. Pos gaan gaan. Pos. gaan op die album, daar die link, linkerkant onder, gaan hier links, nog hier links, gaan hier links, hier links, onder, jou links, gaan jou links, onder, heel onder, heel onderste skermpie, daar is hy, klik op hom, alright, gaan we kraan nu, yes, klik op hom, ok, druk pause, druk op die microfoonkie, Gaan een beetje rechts, gaan rechts, gaan rechts. Klik op die scherm achter jou. En dan klik op die microfoon. Daar is hy, druk play. There's so many of your mind that you've seen this one. As atonement for us, to the Son who overcame all the power of death, we pray. 
hands for the stripes, for the wounds, for the beating you bore, for the tears, for the blood that was willingly Bless them with the mercy of our Jesus Christ and with the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Amen. Amen. Let's go have some coffee.